Good afternoon. This is Dr. Thomas Klein. I am a senior advisor at the National Pain Council, a group of people that have been working for the past three years to uncover the truth about opiates. And there's a lot of stuff out there that's not true. We're not going to just say it's not true because that's their tactic. They just say this is true. We're going to have facts and we're going to publish uh, reports with facts in them that you can check yourself. This is not our opinion. This is a summary of facts. So today we're going to talk about um, something that's going to be soon published uh, about pain clinics. When I was practicing medicine, there were no pain clinics. Well, I know of. Um, I, there were a couple of pain specialists, anesthesiologists I used to refer my patients to. When I got stuck with a painful patient, uh, once or twice per year. But because the CDC got together with the federal drug police and convinced the federal drug police that what they were doing was right, and the federal drug police didn't know otherwise since they were listening to the medical establishment and the government. So you can't really blame the DEA. They thought they were doing God's work. One of them told one of our patients that, uh, he said, don't you understand we're saving your morals? There's still this kind of moral turpitude thing wrapped around opiate pain medicines. Um, and it's not true. It's true for other addictions, but it's not true for opiate addiction because it turns out it's genetically controlled. It happens suddenly to people, not after a long period of time of drug abuse, not even drug abuse. You hear stories of people went to the doctor and now they're heroin addicts. Well, that's because some people develop euphoria on the very first pill and the second pill leads them into an addiction. So, Doctors were afraid because they heard stories of the United States Department of Justice sending doctors off to prison for 20 years, 40 years, and in one case, a fellow I know, Dr. Stephen Henson, was given a life sentence. What did he do wrong? He should have known his patients were selling his prescriptions. Should have known? That's a legal principle in order to have more convictions at the federal level. What could be better than feckless doctors sweating that they're going to spend 20 years in prison and have to close their medical practices and have no income for their families and abandon all their patients? In Dr. Hansen's case, he had several people, and in Dr. Joel Smithers, a similar case. Both these doctors uh, were Christian missionaries and Maybe a little soft touch, I don't know. But patients who convinced the doctors that they had real illnesses and they got prescriptions, then they went and sold the prescriptions after they got them, and the doctors didn't know. So last year, the Supreme Court ruled nine to nothing that you can't put a doctor in prison or convict them if they didn't know what was going on. It's a legal principle called mens rea which means you have to know that you convicted, a, you did a crime. So this fear then affected 80% of doctors in the United States where they said, I'm not prescribing any more opiates. I'm not going to prison or lose my license like I did. Got the, my uh, DEA license pulled. You, know, you remember that story. So they found a good excuse send them to a pain clinic. Well, these pain clinics started popping up all over the place, you know, pop up businesses. We just did a recent survey and found out that about half of people were going to a pain clinic and suddenly closed. So abandonment of the patients. Primary care doctors were so afraid of ending up in prison and losing their careers they sent them to these pain clinics thinking the pain clinics would solve the problem. They didn't solve the problem. 
And as a matter of fact, pain clinics have some problems. And we're just going to look at some, uh, we asked our patients a little survey. How many of you were told to do spine injections, pump stimulators, and other surgical procedures? And if you didn't, they wouldn't prescribe pain medicines. Two-thirds had that happen to them. There were uh, 158 people. Okay, a lot of times you read that the doctors didn't do thorough examinations. That's really not up to the government. Um, patients have less examinations on follow-up. They don't distinguish whether this was new patient or follow-up. A good examination is generally considered appropriate for a new patient. But after you know the patient, you don't need to do a physical examination each time. It's a waste of time. So we asked, how many of you have been examined by the pain management doctor on the first visit? No exam, 40%. Cursory exam, 30%. One third had a thorough exam, which is appropriate. But you see, the government thinks pain clinics are solving the problem. We had one pain doctor say that they didn't want to prescribe opiates and look like a pill mill, so they were pushing $1,000 dangerous injections. The next question we asked is, after you lost your primary care doctor who sent you off to the pain clinic, how many of you then lost the doctor at the pain clinic? Two-thirds. How many of you forced to go to pain clinics had the doctors or practitioners start a new prescription for pain control or increase the dose of your existing prescription? 60% said the uh, doctors or practitioners refused either. They refused to treat with their existing and they refused to add new medicines. There are few if any rules or regulations requiring the humiliating pain contracts and urine tests that were actually only for people in addiction clinics. See the, the uh, lack of sophistication by the CDC writers thought that if you take methods that are used in an addiction clinic and apply them to pain clinics, you'll stop addiction. People in addiction clinics are different and they need different uh, monitoring systems which the folks who have the addiction disease actually appreciate. These were never intended for pain clinics and the CDC said there's no evidence one way or the other that these things such as drug tests and contracts work, but yet they're the law of the land, like somebody passed a rule. And the only place you can really find this is in the CDC guidelines after they said, you know, we don't know if these work, but we, we recommend these. You know, it's kind of like me as a doctor saying, well, I got these pills here, and I, I don't know if they work, but let's give them a try. That was 600 people responded. How many of you currently at pain clinics are receiving adequate pain medicine treatment? 13%. How many are under treated? 60%. How many are receiving no pain medicine at the pain clinic? 25%. Have you ever been dropped from a pain clinic for any reason? One third of the patients 
who go to pain clinics are dropped out of fear of DEA raids at the pain clinic, so we've heard. How many people found a new prescriber after they were dumped from the pain clinic? This is 500 people responded. 15% found a new prescriber. 85% could not find a new prescriber and were abandoned. How many pain clinics offered these spinal um, steroid injections? 42%. Only 16% did not offer spine injections, which by the way are very dangerous and can su suppress your renal gland and cause you to have Cushing, or rather uh, a Addison's disease, which can be fatal. Too much steroids in your body can be fatal. Every person who's received more than one spinal injection needs to have an endocrine evaluation to see if their adrenal glands are still working. How many of you have been kicked out of the pain clinic, your only resource for pain control, because of an abnormal urine drug test? One third. Do you know what the CDC said about urine drug tests? They said, do not kick patients out of your practice because of an abnormal urine drug test. They're doing it anyway. How many people actually were sent to pain clinics and away from their practice. Two thirds. Only 19% stayed with their original doctor. That's how frightened primary care doctors have become of the treatment of pain with the only medicine that actually works opiates. How many of you going to pain clinics found they did not prescribe opiates at all? 41%. One third, 28%, said they were only offered pain medicines if they agreed to an injection. I think that's extortion. Might even be criminal extortion. Somebody needs to call their uh, county um, attorney general and ask them. How many of you are treated with respect as you would be in a traditional doctor's office at the pain clinic? Two-thirds said they were treated disrespectfully.